As someone who struggled with ADHD throughout his academic career, I know firsthand the struggles that come with trying to succeed in the traditional academic environment. But today I'm excited to share with you guys how I overcame those struggles and even graduated with honors despite all those challenges. Not only did I graduate with honors, but I did all that without any medication or any sort of special treatment because I didn't even have a proper ADHD diagnosis until years after I graduated. I say all this not to brag or anything like that, but just to share with you guys how it's totally possible to succeed in a environment not built for our type of brains, and I can still graduate with honors despite doing poorly on exams. Currently, I'm the chief of staff at a law firm, and I also do marketing consulting for various other companies, and I do this YouTube channel, so it's a lot. ADHD can kick your butt, but I'm living proof that you can still do it all. So let me start off by saying that school was far from easy for me. In fact, for most of grade school, I had a really hard time maintaining decent grades, let alone E's or B's. I remember sitting in class just completely unable to listen to the teacher's words as my mind would just wander aimlessly. I'd forget to write down important details and assignments, and by the time I got home, I was just so overwhelmed with everything that it was just causing me so much anxiety. My inability to focus and stay organized in school just made me feel like a failure. I couldn't keep up with my classmates and it was a major blow to my self-esteem. I just simply felt that I was never going to be able to live up to my full potential and that I wouldn't be able to make my parents proud and that I was not gonna go anywhere. It was frustrating and it was demoralizing and that paired with just not knowing what I wanted to do with my life was just a whirlwind of just constant stress and frustration. I've always been really terrible at math, and I remember one particular incident where I was taking a math test and I studied so long, and when the test came, I just completely froze up. I couldn't even finish, I couldn't even finish the test because I just had no idea what that information was. It looked like a completely new language to me, even though I had been studying it or trying to study it for weeks. When I got my test back, I got a 50%, and everyone else around me got much better than that. And I like lied and I was like trying to hide my score and trying to pretend like I was doing well too. But deep down I was like, I'm in, I'm in trouble. I had no doubt that I was putting the reps in, I was doing the work, but I just wasn't getting the results. I remember going to a counselor and they were quick to tell me that top schools were out of the question. They told me that if I wanted to have a continued education that I should seriously consider community college and go from there. And in hindsight, honestly, that probably wouldn't have been the worst idea. Not because I didn't do well in college, but because I would have saved a lot more money. And I've had friends that did community college and then went off to go to Ivy League school. So that just goes to show that it's not where you start, but it's where you end. But as someone who grew up in a small town, it was imperative that I graduated and went off to a four-year university, if not for bragging rights, just to get out of my town. I noticed a pattern where people that were graduating before me that didn't go off to college were staying in that hometown where there was no opportunities and I did not want that at all. Somehow I finished with a good enough GPA to get into some schools, one being the school that I went to, which was a Cal State, and I was just excited to go from the mountain to the beach. So I didn't even give it a second thought. I was like, this is where I'm going. But because I got a D in trigonometry my senior year in high school, I had to take remedial math my freshman year at my college, and if I didn't pass, then I was going to get dropped from the university. So I had to get creative. I decided enough was enough. I got to figure out how I'm going to pass this remedial math class that I don't even want to tell my new friends that I'm making that I'm in and just be able to stay in school. At that point, I didn't have an ADHD diagnosis. I refused to believe that anything was wrong with me, and I was just trying to work with what I had. I wasn't taking medication, I wasn't getting special treatment for test taking or anything like that. It was just me against this class and school and staying there. And test taking was never a strong suit of mine, so I had to get creative if I was going to graduate college, let alone excel in college. What I started to see that could be an advantage was mastering all the things besides test taking that could be in my control that I can continuously do day in and day out. This meant always doing the homework, always doing extra credit, always going to office hours always having perfect attendance because my biggest coping strategy was anxiety and I was never going to be late or miss class. This began to be my prime area of focus. I knew that if I did everything else right and I still didn't do great on tests, I could still get A's and B's. 
Focusing on everything I could control allowed me to mitigate all the effects of what would become ADHD and still succeed. The system I built for myself ended up working and not only did I end up graduating, I graduated with honors. Throughout the process, I just tried to be kind to myself and I leaned into knowing what my strengths and what my weaknesses were. I stopped beating myself up on all my mistakes and just focused on all the progress I was making. As I was getting good grades on everything else besides the tests and I was finishing the classes with A's and B's, this was keeping me really motivated to continue on. I also found that seeking out resources such as counselors and tutors and after school hours and everything else, that could provide me a way to get more time in to learn things or have a way to earn extra credit or anything like that was something that was extraordinarily helpful for me. And if you go back and look at my previous video on how I learned difficult things easily with ADHD, I talk about other strategies that were really helpful during this time, like color-coded notes and listening to music and exercise. I also understood that it was important to prioritize and assess my time properly. I want you to know that ADHD doesn't define you and it doesn't limit your potential for success. Whether you have ADHD or you think you do or you don't, or you're taking medication or you're not, it doesn't matter. You can still apply these frameworks and get really far. You're totally capable of achieving great things if you just believe in yourself and you find different strategies that work for you. I believe in you, keep pushing forward, stay positive, and remember that ADHD is just one part of your unique story. With proper accommodations or support or perseverance, you can accomplish whatever you want in the schooling system despite your ADHD. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope that you found this video helpful. If you have any specific questions, please leave them down in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you quickly. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. You could also follow me on Instagram if you like looking at me but not hearing me talk. Thank you again for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Maybe it's this one coming up right here. All right, later.